feel like I should like pop in behind a, a like pie on my face. Remember, Mr. Um, Doubtfire? Hello. No, yeah, you need to get like a rolling stool where you're off, and then you go be like, yeah. Wait, like, hold on. Well, oh, no, that's not. Oh wait, 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 I got one. Hold on. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that was that was, that was just mostly uh, that was mostly uncomfortable. Just uncomfortable. <laughs> Creepy. A little bit. Yeah. No, I feel, I feel a little weird right now. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Um, hello everybody. My name is Cristana and I am from Bella Renovare by Cristana. And this is my, you know, when I point this way on my screen, it looks like I'm pointing at you, but then it looks weird on the video. So I think I have to point this way, even though you're not even here. Yeah. Does that mean, are you over here for me too? Yeah. You got to point the right. Yep. If you point that way, it's re I think. I don't know. All we'll right. Figure it out. Yeah, you're, you're right. I saw that. I saw that last time because it was backwards. My name is Brandy and I am the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Who? Yeah, exactly. Who Never heard of her. Time. Never heard of her. This is the paint cast. Not a podcast. Yeah. It's paint cast. Paint, ca paint cast podcast. And we are coming to you every single week. We upload our videos on Tuesday, right? Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Is that what we did? That's the plan. Should everything go as planned? Which probably won't because knowing us, no. Yeah, um, we try. We yeah. did an A for effort. A for effort. So I hope you guys enjoyed last week's video. We're going to get- Our reintroduction, the rebirth of the Paintcast podcast was last week. So if you guys haven't already, go catch that one up on our YouTube channel. There were four episodes from last year, and then we kind of rebirthed this just recently to get it back off the ground again and start talking about some stuff. So And I don't remember what we talked about in the four before that. So we can't be held responsible. That was like years, like a year ago. So just, you know, watch it. But if we say something that is like weird, don't, don't blame us. Yeah, it feels like a million, it feels like a million years ago. Like I if know. I listen to it, I'm probably gonna cringe. I know. We're like, oh, what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, what was I talking about? I don't even know. Um, yeah, th that was like mid-COVID and now we're way further in. So things the world has changed. Yeah, we're grown up COVID now. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we've been cheering yeah. a lot since then. Yes, we have. <laughs> so Last week, we kind of talked a little bit about when we were exclusive and kind of a little bit of a change going on in our business. And Brandy and I had thought that this is probably the best way to do what we're about to do. And we feel like we want to be super transparent, talk about different things in the industry. And if we don't talk about the elephant in the room, and some of you may not know what we're talking about. And if you don't, cool great. Um, if some of you do, then you do. And it's not meant to bring up drama or bring up the past. I just feel, we feel like in order to move forward, we need to just be transparent, tell what our, what our experience is, and then move on from there. So that way, you know, like Brandy had said, if we talk about things, we're not tiptoeing around things and, you know, kind of, how did you explain it? Yeah, we don't want to be dodging as we go forward and we're talking about things. There is a realistic path that our businesses have taken. Now there's an experience that we went through. And if we're constantly ducking and dodging what we do and don't say, then it's always going to be this elephant in the room. And we want to try to just clear some of it up. We want to move past any um, awkwardness about it. It's okay to talk about it. It happened. It's real. It's something that we went through. It's going to change the future of our businesses too. You know, a little bit of history. If you're not familiar with what we're talking about, we were in a long-term exclusive relationship with a company and we recently severed that relationship. Um, and we want to kind of talk about how that happened and what, you know, what the situation looked like from our perspective. We can only share what we went through. Um, and what that path looked like, we want to share it in a very factual way. This is not meant to be a negative conversation at all, but just informing kind of what we went through. And so we are going to bring out the elephant in the room. We are going to talk about him and then we are going to let him move on and not appear again. Yeah. Um, um, we want to answer some questions, answer some questions. We want to clear up some misconceptions. We want to dismiss some rumors that have appeared. Um, you know, uh, one thing that we've experienced is we thought going into this that our silence would be the best way to handle it. And we've since found that 
um, that's not the case. Um, we found that it has only allowed for other parties to control the narrative and um, to use us as collateral damage in doing so. And so um, we have to have a version out there um, and this is how we wanna handle it. Right, and when we, last week we had talked about, you know, toxic positivity and part of that is staying quiet. Right. When you have an experience and you stay quiet about that experience because you think that, okay, if I'm quiet and I don't say anything because I don't want to hurt anybody, you know, there's, you know, we left this company and we don't want to hurt the people that are back. And we want to take, you take on the responsibility of the situation and you take on all the responsibility of not saying anything, not hurting people or whatever. And then you, and then it messes with you you know, like mentally you are, you want to move on. But then again, this toxic positivity of if we just pretend like everything is okay. And, you know, we are positive. I am so excited about what is to come. And I know Brandy is, but that it's not been all sunshine and rainbows. And if we know this was a choice that, that we made, we made it voluntarily. We made it because we believed in it. We chose this, we chose this path. That does not mean it was easy though. No, because sometimes, you know, with, with relationships, you learn what you want and what you don't want with relationships. I mean, it's like, and truthfully with this industry and how Brandy and I have been in front of the camera by choice, we have created a online presence. We've taken our business online. That also meant that it was like, we went through a public divorce. It but, was very public and it was subject to interpretation and judgment and questions and um, something that was very emotional at the time. There was a sense of loss. There was a grieving process that we had to go through and we had to do it publicly with a lot of questions coming our way and trying to keep ourselves composed throughout it. Um, it was a huge challenge. Right. And, you know, like, like I said, you know, sometimes when things happen, you can kind of just be quiet and let time do its thing. But that is not what happened in our situation. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. So I just want you guys, I want to be transparent, let you know that Brandy and I sat down, we made a timeline so that it's very factual. There is no room for, I mean, obviously this is an emotional thing, but we don't want to come to you in an emotional way. We wrote down a timeline so that we do not stray because clearly you know, in some of those conversations and situations, there's, there's layers to what happened, but we wanted to stick straight to the facts and our experience. And that way, that's, that's all we can do is just tell you factually what we went through. That's not to say that anyone else who's still with the company had the same experience. You've got to remember Brandy and I were with them for three, four years, four years. So, you know, everyone is on a different path. We understand that. And so if there are some people who didn't leave, they have a different path. They, they have to do what's best for their business. But I know for me personally, I had to do what was best for Bella Renovare because that's my business. And I do want to say when you become so exclusive, especially with a company that's growing and carrying more and more products, you become more and more you know, exclusive and locked down essentially. And that does have, that is detrimental to your own business because eventually you're almost like working for the other company instead of being a business working alongside. Well, I think you even start to recognize yourself as being synonymous with them so that when someone says something about that business, you think they're saying it about you and you're not able to see the differentiation between the two. And I think that it's really easy to allow that to happen. Um, you know, I kind of want to speak to those relationships. Those relationships were extremely important to me. I value them still to this day uh, very much. That has been the greatest source of loss for me was the relationships. We were part of a team that worked extremely closely together. We went through a difficult situation together. Um, that even currently is probably the hardest part of this uh, for me to talk about. Right. So. Uh, you know, that is a whole nother morning process that we lost those connections to. Um, and I still will always value those people. Right. Well, and last week we had talked about, you know, some people asked Brandy, are you still going to be brushed by Brandy? And some people asked me if I was still going to do YouTube videos and that 
Unfortunately, and this is, I will, I never want to say, oh, you shouldn't be exclusive because everyone's got to make their own decisions. But these are things that we didn't realize. And once you mm -hmm. step away, you realize the positive and negative impacts that it has on your own business, what you started, what I started yeah. six years ago in my garage, you know, so, you know, yeah. what you, start you know, and there are, de there are decisions that, that there's parts of this, that I regret some choices that I made and hindsight's always 2020, right? When you're in it, you can't always see those things. So it, it does, you know, it's been a learning experience to look back and say, I wish I would have done this differently and that differently. And that's something that I want to, you know, how, share some wisdom on and what, what would I change if I could, what am I really glad that I didn't change? You know, there's, there's both sides of that. Right. And like I said, you know, with any relationship breakups suck but you learn from them, you grow, hopefully you grow from them. You learn, especially in business, you learn what you will and will won't do. And that's why last week I said, I'll never be exclusive again, because I just, I felt like everything I worked for as Bella Renovare stopped looking like Bella Renovare. And I want to clarify one thing. There is a difference between using something exclusively because you enjoy it, you like right. it, you, right. it's your choice and using something exclusively because you're contractually obligated to. Right. So there will be times when I choose, I, I'm gonna speak hypothetically, my favorite clear coat. And that's the one that I go to all the time because I just really like it. Like I'm not obligated to, but I just really tend towards that product. That's gonna happen. But I don't ever see myself being contractually exclusive to that level again. Right. And, you know, for me personally, I will say that I knew at some point I was going to have to not be exclusive if I wanted to grow because my focus has turned to, you know, YouTube and things like that. And a lot of people want to see you use different things and, and teach different things. And so I knew in the back of my head that eventually I would have to go, but the, the series of events that happened solidified my choice. So, you know, with that being said, we did do a timeline. And so I just don't want you guys to be like, why are they reading from a script? Because we're trying, this is very emotional. This is something that is very emotional for Brandy and I, and we talk every day. The only way that we are going to be able to not be emotional and be professional is to just read what we have put together. Yeah. So and so we want to you know, you know <laughs> We want to avoid paraphrasing. We want to avoid, uh, you know, you know, talking negatively because that's not what it's about. It's more of an explanation um, than anything. There will be some things that we kind of go off and, and explain a little bit more, but for the most part, we want to stick to the facts of what really just happened and what the script looked like for us. Right. And so um, this is our own personal experience. Um, you know, like we said, what Brandy and I have gathered over the last few months is that being silent, um, you know, normally when you're silent in a situation, it kind of passes, the storm passes, and then everything's kind of forgotten. But that's not, that's not what has been happening. Um, and to be quite honest, we, we have, as much as we want to not get messages and receipts, screenshots of things, we have. And so it just kind of, keeps it going. You know, when you, when you think you've moved on and then you're like, it keeps the it going. Rumor, the rumor mill has gotten so much worse than the truth. Uh, little nuggets have been dropped by the other party that have allowed people to continue with rumors that are just all out blatantly false. Right. And so honestly, I think we can make it a lot more concise by squashing some of these rumors and putting out that other side of the story that people are missing. And so they're filling it in themselves and it's worse. Well, and I think, you know, for me, I feel like when did it become a bad thing to tell your personal experience? Um, I think, you know, this well, life in general is filled with, like we said, toxic positivity, where it's like, if you just, if you just think it, wish it away, it's going to go away. Like if you think positive, it's going to, and, and that is true to a point, but it gets to the point where like, you feel like you, you shouldn't say anything because it could hurt somebody else. And it, and then that you suffer. And so why, yeah. you know, so the, that's the thing is that this has been months, right? Um, yeah. And we've been forced to 
you know, read these comments that are being said, see things that are, hear them from, you know, as we're trying to move on to these new relationships, and some of this is spreading to even new relationships. Um, and so, you know, we're, it's coming to us one way or another, we don't have the choice, we cannot avoid it. Um, and so we're kind of being forced into a corner to, to address it instead. Right. I mean, the thing is at the end of the day, as a business, when you are speaking to other businesses about possible relationships and they do not want to align with you because of being, or because of what's going on, you know, it's just, it's hard. So yeah. And I, and I've honestly found that, you know, I've honestly found more support, uh, you know, that, that they're supportive, but just that it's going on needs to stop. Yeah. Just stop. <laughs> just let it go. Yeah, just stop. Unless you're going to get both sides of a story, you can't just take the one version you've been given and think that it's completely factual and take that and run with it. And then not only that, but be broadcasting it at the same time, you know, unless you're going to get a balanced perspective on everything, then, you know, you can't really speak on something. And unfortunately it's something that's still being spoken on. So, well, and also, you know, I want to piggyback on when we said, you know, we've been sent privately, we've been sent information, but this has publicly gone to our social media. So there are people who are publicly on our social medias taking whatever rumors have yeah. been thrown out or whatever versions of the story and they're publicly going, you know, so whatever was said in a private public group is now coming to our social media platforms. And I'm like, this has got to stop. This is enough is yeah. So with that being said, would you like to read the timeline? Okay, this is why I think Brandy should do it because she's much better spoken. I'm like that bear, this is what happened. And she's much more professional and composed. See, I, I disagree. Cause I, I think the intro that you wrote was very appropriate. Do you want to just read it? And then we'll just carry into, I know we already said some of it, but do you want to read that part still? Or do yeah, you feel so like- I'll read the it? first two paragraphs and then you okay. can go into, okay. So Brandy and I, thought being silent after our initial announcements on our social media platforms would have allowed our community to know we are moving we are moving on we're no longer with our previous company and that we could just move on from that we had no intention of going public with the details because we did not want to negatively affect the individuals who are associated with the previous company this is not meant to bring more drama, but we need to tell our personal experience and truth. Other people who work with the company may not have had the same experience. Therefore, each person has made a different choice based on his or, own, his, or, his or her own experience. What we've come to gather over the last few months is that being silent has allowed the other party in this situation to control the narrative not only telling multiple false reasons for our departure, but also crossing the line into defamation by telling a group of thousands of retailers that we wanted them to partake, partake in illegal activities in order for us to be compensated or remain brand ambassadors for the company. This public announcement has since been removed by the, the other party, but not before it was said in front of thousands of people. Those people then have taken that false accusation to Brandy and I social media platforms, which are public to tens of thousands of people. And I will tell you that um, Brandy and I, I, I put together what our platforms together are and it's over half a million people. So that is, that's damaging, you know, because the people who have gotten to know us, we haven't changed. I'm not a different person than I was three months ago. But when you have another party that, you know, and we stay silent. So that's, that's one of the reasons why we have chose to come out and say, give you guys our experience just because it may make it worse. I don't know. This may open us up to more scrutiny. I'm not sure, but at this point, <laughs> I don't we, think. We, yeah, we have to try doing something different because what's going on right now is not working. Right. So being, being quiet is not working. And so this is why we are just going to be up forth and honest with you guys. So 
Take it away. All right. So the first thing I wanted to explain is that the brand ambassadors, um, and this is very common in our industry, are compensated through what's called affiliate links. And we actually have a video already um, on our YouTube channel that explains affiliate marketing. But it's basically a, or a commission type structure where you have a link uh, that link has numbers that are contained into it that uh, track that uh, link um, and attribute that purchase to the person whose link who owns that link. Um, and so when you would click on our link, we would earn a percentage of those sales from um, those link clicks. And um, in October, we noticed significant declines in our commissions across the team that were outside of normal business cycles. Now, at first we started to question, maybe this is just a, a slow time, a slow month. Let's keep an eye on this. And as we continued to keep an eye on it, in November, the declines continued to where we were roughly at between 25 and 50% of normal. So talking uh, 75, 50 to 75% losses in our income across the board um, to everyone, which those are very significant numbers to anyone. I don't think anyone would consider those uh, small. And so we knew that this was an issue that needed to be addressed. Something out of the ordinary was going on. So in mid-November, we brought this issue to the attention of the brand along with evidence that it was related to a larger internet privacy policy issue. There were changes made to internet privacy um, through major platforms like Google and iOS, which is Apple, um, that changed how links could be tracked across the internet. And it was, uh, it was limiting um, tracking of sales made through those links, which was inhibiting us from earning from them. So the, the, the update happened on September 20th. Which is why I, we started noticing it in October. Yeah. And my assumption would be that most people, like if I get an update, an iOS update, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Wait, wait until it's forced. So I think we didn't start seeing it really until people were basically, cause I have an Apple. I know you don't, but what happens sometimes is that when my phone, if there's an update, if it doesn't have enough battery or you don't say the update, then it doesn't happen. But then there's sometimes where if like your phone's plugged in at night, it's like, oh no, we're doing this update. If, and so if it's plugged into a power, a lot of times it will automatically update. And so I think the reason why it was kind of delayed is because humans are humans and they weren't doing the update right away is the my update. assumption. Yeah. Could be wrong. Yeah. And we did, we did a lot of research into this topic. And so we know way more about this topic than we'd <laughs> like to, Yeah, but it forced us to educate ourselves in the, why this was happening, what was happening, what was causing it. Um, so anyway, uh, it was inhibiting tracking of these links. And we noticed this, we brought it to the attention of the brand um, in November. Uh, we all began researching, including doing test transactions that confirmed that only a limited amount of transactions were tracking. Now, this does not mean that those purchases were not still coming in. People were still using our links as they normally would. Those numbers were still coming in, only they were not being attributed to that brand ambassador. And so, uh, you know, those sales were not being earned, which is why we were seeing the loss of the income, but those sales were still coming in. They just were not being attributed to anyone. They were going hundred percent to the brand. Right. So like, it, for example, I'm sure Brandy said this, but I, you know, I, I click on Brandy's link and I say, I want to support Brandy. She did a really great job on her live. I click on her link. I order and you know, if it was broken in any way, shape or form, like if you closed out of your, if you closed out of your browser, it would break that link. Um, let's say, you know, you were like, I got to go to the bathroom and like, close my laptop down. It would break the link. And, um, you went and so checked your Gmail, you went and shopped target for dog food and then came back. Anything that broke that would mean that that sale was broken. And so, so the sale you know, went through, it's not that the website yeah. itself was broken. It was you go in thinking you are clicking on this to support Brandy. And that's not what was happening when yeah. it meant like, that straight line that straight line was broken and now it became a new line that was just you communicating with the company and the brand ambassador was removed from that transaction. Right. I'm pretty sure she said, um, okay. I, I like to keep it simple because I, I it's, it's a very complex, so it's a complex topic. Affiliate marketing is very interesting. It's actually a genius concept, but I think this is going to revolutionize and change how it has to happen in our industry. You know, I don't think we think internet privacy is a great thing, but this actually is going to affect the incomes of, you know, a ton of people. 
Because we can explain um, a little bit. One of um, one of the suggestions was to go from a third party cookie to a first party cookie. And I think Brandy can explain it a little bit better um, because with the new iOS update, it only allows first party cookies. So can you yeah. kind of explain a little bit about what that is like in layman's terms? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the easiest I, the easiest way for me to understand it is a first party cookie is a direct connection. It's a direct path. It's one path, one party or you know one party cookie. A third party cookie has to track you through multiple sites, and it's going like this to get you to that final destination. So as long as you stay on that direct path, it's a first party. Uh, a third party cookie goes like this to get you there. It's you're taking the scenic route all of a sudden. Yeah, right. Uh, you have to track through multiple websites. Now I want to clarify something. The company was saying we had first party cookies, but when we did testing, that was not the case because they did not track. So that was an issue that we ran into is being told it's fine. It's fine. That's not the problem. And we're like, but it's not. <laughs> well, and also, work. you know, one of the um, tests that we did, there was proof that it was being blocked. And we showed them on one of the tests that on the privacy area on the person's um, you can have, you have like reports, right? Like privacy reports and on the privacy report, the program that is being used was blocked. So that tells us that it was a third party cookie because it was being literally on the report, it was being blocked. So yeah. we knew, I mean, we, we definitely did our research for a good, what, week? Prior oh, no. more, to like, more than that, more there was two, there was week. two weeks involved, but between when we notified them and then when all this happened. So, uh, you know, I'll keep going on. Uh, at first we were told that uh, they would continue to research and get back to us. And then this ran into the long Thanksgiving weekend. So in the meantime, I kind of want to explain a little bit about what we were going through is this was extremely stressful. Right. At this point, we've seen our incomes plummet. We've lost, you know, some of us 75% of our income. We're not sure what's going to happen. We're continuing to work based on blind faith that something will change. Um, we don't, you know, tears are being shed. There is extreme stress. These are people's livelihoods that are at risk here. So this is extremely stressful. We well, ran we into were having to, um, you know, a lot of people were having to get rid of, uh, so there's virtual assistants that help you with your business. It's kind of like, it's an assistant. It's an assistant. Yeah. And, um, you know, a few of the people on the team, I mean, I know for me personally, I had to ask my virtual assistant to step back for the whole month of December, yeah. just because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Yeah. I had to let, I, I had two people helping. I had to let one go because it was looking like this was, if, if my, if my business is going to fall off a cliff, then I've got to make different decisions. And so that was one of them that had to go. And so at this point, people are getting let go. Um, it was, it was a scary time. So we ran into that Thanksgiving weekend where you're like, dang it, you know, I know businesses close. Um, and so we're stressed out. Um, and that particular weekend, I sent a message to, um, a superior and I said, we're really concerned because we know that the links aren't working. Um, and they were attached to the compensation structure for the upcoming brand ambassador transfers. Um, and not having our links functional would completely devalue that release for us. Uh, we had a lot of time invested in that transfer release and their stress involved because not only have we already lost um, from our existing sales, but now we're looking at something that we worked months and months and months on potentially being completely devalued by this as well. So we knew that this big wall was coming up on us. So I expressed that to a superior saying we have this concern. Just so you know, we feel like there's a deadline on this that we need to address it. The response that I got was don't worry, everything's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. We'll take care of it. That was on a Saturday after the Thanksgiving weekend. We came back to work the following Monday and we waited a couple days and it was Wednesday before we heard back again. Um, by the following Wednesday, we hadn't heard an update. So I typed up a list of possible compromises and solutions that could be employed in the absence of our links. So if our links could not work to compensate us, what could we do? Um, so some of those suggestions that I made were possibly using averages in the meantime. Averages mean some people win, some people lose. You don't really know because we didn't have any numbers to base it off of because they weren't tracking. So averages were one suggestion I made. Um, 
employing a royalty on the transfers, which would mean paying a percentage of sales, uh, regardless of you know, who they were attributed to, since we didn't have that tracking mechanism. These are just suggestions. I was trying to come up with positive ways that we could solve a situation that nobody wanted to be in, but what could we do to make it better? Well, and let's be um, clear too that, um, you know, royalties on designs is an industry standard generally. Yes. So it was, um, you know, basically presented that we had these links for royalties and it was kind of going back and forth of which one would be better for the artist. And this was a conversation we'd already had. And so this was the agreement that we made was to base it on the links instead of the royalties, because we thought we had the option of the links, but then when they were no longer an option, could we go back and look at royalties again? That's why I added it to my list of suggestions. Well, and when uh, you're talking about the designs, um, you know, I want to be very clear that the designs had, have our business names on them. So it's, you know, inspired by Brush by Brandy, inspired by Bella Renovare. So in business period, when you are aligning with another business, using another business, you know, using Nike's name, for example, that you have to pay, you know what I mean? So business aside, it's not, it's not about, um, oh, you know, they want to be paid. Like it's, it's business. <laughs> yeah. And white. Yeah. So, and you know, I'll speak to that too. Uh, you know, the year prior, uh, I had a similar deal with another company that was a royalty deal. And I left that on the table to commit to an exclusive relationship with this, this brand. And so I knew what that looked like because I had already bypassed that with another brand to do this, you know, and, and commitments were made based on that. So we had agreements in place. This was not something that we went into just blindsided. We had discussed it. These were already terms that we had agreed on. So when this piece went missing of it, we had to figure out a way to work around it. So um, another it's suggestion I made us as artists, right? You see us as artists and we give and this give. is the business side. This is my job. So this, this is, is the business side of it. Yes. Like this is my job. This is a business, even though it's fun and we, we make furniture and we make things nice. Like it's, it is people's livelihood. Okay. So yes. we, we need you guys to sometimes understand that because there are, there have been things that are out there about, you know, pay and yada, yada, and things like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is my job. This is my business. I own this. Business. And at the end of the day too, I don't, I don't, I would never proactively encourage anybody to work for free. And not only that, but if you have an agreement in place that should be abided by and all the way through this, I can't stress enough that the only thing we wanted to abide by was the existing terms of our agreement. Yeah, the, we were not asking for anything above and beyond status status quo. These were already terms that were agreed upon. Uh, and that is all we were trying to get to. So um, another suggestion I made in my list of suggestions that I sent in an email format was employing an internal tracking system versus using a third party company to track. That would be an IT adjustment that could be made internally. Um, and then another suggestion was that if we had to change our links, that we would go back as team members and rewrite our content. So years of content that we have that contain these links, take them out and rewrite it to a new link if that is something we needed to do. I was trying to be constructive and find solutions that got us both to a mutual agreement. Um, unfortunately, no response was ever received to that communication. It was never responded to. It was never addressed with me at all. Um, and so that was disappointing, but the effort was there. Um, so that was on Wednesday. On Thursday, we were notified that there would be a Facebook Live um, and we need to get on and attend that. And so we all got on to the Facebook Live and we've all been on Facebook Lives before. We know that that's one way communication. You can't talk back other than in a comment thread. Uh, so we were just receiving communication at that point. Um, and we were told in that communication that this was going to be the new normal. Uh, no corrections would be employed to fix the situation. And it was recommended that we go about an education campaign with our followers, meaning to instruct everyone from here on out. Uh, the one way that you could make a purchase and we could still get credit for it and we would need to include that in any um, you know, uh, any content that we created that had our link to teach people how we might get credit for a sale still, but no other solutions would be made other than that. 
Um, we asked questions during the broadcast. They were not relayed at all. And so a lot of our questions went unanswered. As soon as that broadcast was over, the broadcast was deleted. So you could not go back and re-refer to it. And um, what we were told was that the losses would be permanent. Um, and we were in tears at that point. So uh, that afternoon, a post was put up also in our group that the transfers that we had worked on would be going live the following morning. I sent a message as soon as I saw that questioning if that mess if that post was accurate because it violated the terms of the release that we had agreed on for the transfers. Um, and doing that release on broken links meant that our means of earning from those designs that included our names and ideas was disabled. I requested a call. No response was ever received. We had months invested in the release special content created, a calendar of promotions that I'd created, um, and exclusive release rights that were guaranteed to the artists. Uh, with those going public, uh, without the artists involved, all that was being violated. Um, we waited until the next morning, and the transfers did go live to the public the next morning, ahead of the agreed on brand ambassador release schedule using the special content that we had created for our exclusive promotions and not giving any mention to the artists. Um, so at this point, we had been cut out of the release of the transfers and uh, we were guaranteed an exclusive promotion period and the right to unveil those to the public and that was all gone at this point. Okay, so the transfers went live to the public the next morning ahead of the agreed on uh, brand ambassador release schedule using our content um, and no mention of the artist. I do want to emphasize how much that transfer release meant to us. It was uh, it was something that I know that my business had waited for for years to put my name on a product that I got to design. Um, and um, it was something that we were very, very invested in. We had spent, uh, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks of time designing them and then months creating the content that led up to it. Um, I had multiple calls detailing what we were going to do. I had created a calendar that, uh, for the team that we went over what we were all going to do, what that release was going to look like. There, there was so much time invested and then we created all that content. It existed. Um, so we had a plan for this and we were walking down that path. And so when that path was altered, it was extremely uh, disappointing to us. Um, so after that happened and the transfers went live that morning, we were summoned to another call. Um, and this call was, I, I asked that this be an actual voice call so that we could actually share communication and it was. Um, immediately, first thing on the call, we were told that we would not be discussing the release at all. That was before anybody had a chance to speak. We were told that that would not be a topic discussed on that conversation. My response was to say that there is an elephant in the room. It needs to be discussed and our businesses were losing greatly um, for saying that I was blocked out of the call. The same message was repeated on the call. Kristana was a part of it. I was actually blocked out. Um, that links were not be fixed, would not be fixed. And to paraphrase, if we don't like it, we can leave. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add because technically I was not on that call. Um, so the same, the same information was repeated in that call that was the day before. There were a couple, there were a couple other things, you know, because again, we said there's layers to the story. And so to try to not make it emotional and go through that stuff. Um, you know, Brandy was kicked off or blocked out of the call. And then we continued and it was said, you know, no, we will not change. We're not going to fix, you know, it was the reason why they had the call again is because there were a few people on the team that had not made the call the day before. And so we, you know, a lot of people were really upset. And, you know, when you're in the live and you've got multiple people saying, this is not a solution, this is, quoting this is not there was a, a lot of questions going on during the live too that were not addressed they were just go be, going through the comment thread and never reading the questions out either so most right. things were not even addressed 
Um, so we were told, you know, there was a few ways that they were explained. And, you know, some of us were trying to explain, you know, and, and one of one of the gals said, you know, we're not, we understand that this cookie problem is a, is a worldwide problem. We understand that. Um, we're not asking, you know, we understand that if you have to fix it, or maybe it's not going to be fixed, we don't know what that's going to look like going forward. But what we were asking for is for the previous lost compensation to be rectified. Okay. And so what that looks like is what Brandy was saying with the average. And this is kind of what we had talked about. For example, the link, the iOS update happened September 20th. So you take August, July, June, again, it's going to look totally different for everybody. So it's different for everybody on the team. And you take an average of those months because those were prior to this. And then you maybe pay them because again, remember these it's not that your orders were not going through. It was a hundred percent. Anything that was broken, a hundred percent was going to the company. And, and so I think it's important to say too, that these were, these were ideas. These were suggestions. We were trying to come to the table with something instead of just complaining, you try to be part of the solution, right? Don't just be part of the problem, but there was no meeting in the middle. So we were bringing solutions, ideas, trying, you know, this could have been a conversation of, what exactly it would have looked like, what would those terms have been, you know, there, there would have had to been a conversation about it, but it never even got that far because it was just shut down. And so right. I, I want it, I want it to be noted that we made attempts to find resolution that could satisfy this for everyone. So even after Brandy was removed from the call, um, another team member tried to reiterate one of the ideas that Brandy had had to the superior and it was, it was shot down. Um, you know, it was kind of like, you know, we know, we understand. We're just trying to find something. We're just yeah. trying to figure this out. And I want to just make a side note that going through all this, we didn't know what was possible. I'm not a tech person. I don't know. You know, I don't, I, you know, we thought, okay, moving forward, this maybe affiliate marketing may go away because of privacy. Maybe this looks different for just companies in general of, of this, right? So we, Brandy and I work with another company that is based on affiliate marketing as well. And while there was the Black Friday sale, um, there was one, they were having a sale and they said, Hey guys, have people click on your link, use this coupon code. They didn't, you know, each one of us usually has an individual coupon code. And they said, click on this coupon code because it would have taken too long for each affiliate to have their own for the sale or whatever. So they said, you know, have people make sure they're clicking on your link and use this code so that you guys get credit. Well, this company, this is a completely separate company than who we had left, said, sent us an email, said, you know, we realize that there's a problem with the affiliate links and the sale did really well for Black Friday. And we are aware that you guys may have lost some sales because we can't track to your particular coupon code because everyone had the same coupon code. So what we can do is we can add a certain percentage to your balance to try to make it right. You know, it may not make it perfect, but we don't, you know, with, with it being up in the air, they, it was a good faith gesture. Yes. And so, and that's all we were looking for at yeah. this point was a good faith gesture, was an attempt to meet us somewhere in the middle was that effort. And unfortunately, every point we got to, we were just met with a roadblock. No, no, no. Um, and so that, you know, that good faith gesture made by another company really spoke loudly to us because it, it, you know, left the impression that all it would have taken. And that goes a long way to your people to just show that effort. Right. And so I think like in the back of our head, we didn't know what could be possible, but when that happened, we were like, so there is something. There yeah. Is, yeah. A and that was just something so easy. That was just an arbitrary decision. So it, you know, I don't know what it would have looked like. I'm not even going to pretend I didn't go in with demand saying it had to be this way. I just wanted the conversation and I wanted to try to bring something to the table. So uh, it ended up being very one-sided at every point of contact we had, it was shut down. And so uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and continue reading. Um, so um, at this point for me, 
after that live where I'd been blocked out of the call and it had been said, if we don't like these new terms, then we can leave. Um, I had decided that the communication was beyond disrespectful and the consequences were too great to continue. Um, with transfers released ahead of our agreement and no compromises being sought for non-functioning links, trust was gone and there was no solution that allowed us to, to continue in a business relationship. That was an extremely difficult decision for me to make. Um, I requested a call with my direct supervisor. I voiced my concerns. Um, again, no solutions were offered, so I delivered my 30-day notice. Um, I, I don't know if you want to kind of speak uh, to it. So I, I'm going to tell you what happened, <laughs> but it's a little bit, uh, so, you know, when, after Brandy got kicked off the call, we had talked, it was kind of the same concept, whatever. There were a few things that had happened. Um, the superior, you know, this is to quote, and, and I don't, again, I don't want to make this dramatic, but I'm, I'm very much about how you treat people. Um, and it was said, you, I'm very disappointed. You are making this about you, not to me, to the whole team, to a team of grown women. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. You guys are making this all about you. And at that point I had just had enough because it, I just had enough. And so I removed myself from the call and I immediately just put my 30 day notice professional. It's time for Bella Renovare to separate. Um, and a email was back received said your notice has been received. And that was it. There was no there was nothing past that. Yeah, I kind of gave it, you know, I kind of gave it that one last Hail Mary effort to have that conversation because it was a respected relationship. Somebody I had worked very closely with, I, you know, I was the team lead. So I had a lot of co contact and absorbed a lot of things uh, as the intermediate between the brand and the team. And so I respected that relationship. I was sad to be, you know, leaving a professional relationship. It was kind of my last Hail Mary, like, okay, I'm going to come to the table one more time, guys, one more time. And so when it was met again with failure, it, that was kind of my last, you know, my last point. Uh, I had to decide that these losses were unacceptable for my business. They not only were temporary losses, they were losses I could never regain. I could never get back to where my business was. So if I was going to take a step backwards that monumentally, then I would rather do it with a company that... Uh, had a level of respect for me and, and, um, you know, we could have a mutual relationship again, and that it didn't exist at that point. Um, so uh, following that call, I, uh, I uh, was immediately blocked from all groups and my link was disabled while I was still under contract. Um, at that point, I made a public post that I was severing. Um, and I notified them that turning off my link and blocking me was a hindrance to fulfilling my contract um, and uh, it was disruptive to uh, you know the terms of my contract during my period of notice so i let them know that uh, i was not able to fulfill the terms that i had to you know when these things were done um, so at that point they had uh, affected me being able to film, fulfill my contract um, the following day which at this point were at Friday, I had received a request for a call. Um, on that call, I was offered to be paid out in exchange for removing my public post and issuing a pre-approved retraction. Um, those words were read to me, they were not my words. Um, I declined that offer, I did not feel comfortable with it. It was a polite conversation. Um, I said, I, I regretfully decline, I can't post something like that. It's not what happened. Um, and despite it being a polite conversation, I was hung up on and my notice was immediately severed. Um, so at this point, um, we have both, uh, had our relationship severed. Um, so I had a call our, too, you know, um, I had a call too, and I just kind of explained, you know, I, I can no longer be exclusive. I, you know, at that point I, I gave my 30 day notice and I wasn't sure what was going to go on. I didn't know 
how I could move forward. I didn't know if I was going to continue as like a content creator and not be exclusive. I didn't know, I knew I wasn't going to be a brand ambassador and be exclusive anymore. And so that was kind of the conversation I had. I just left it. And um, I had reviewed, you know, without going into details about my contract, I'd reviewed it just to make sure. And it could have been severed from either side immediately. Um, and so I had a letter sent that severed my relationship with them immediately um, as of 15 December. So I had no longer was affiliate. I just didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like if I, I felt like if I stayed even as a content creator, it would create mixed, you know, signals. It would send different, it would just not, it, it didn't align with my company. So I felt like it was best to just sever completely and move on. And I want to kind of explain what those definitions mean. So we were brand ambassadors, brand ambassadors uh, are required to be exclusive. We uh, have, you know, heavier requirements for the content amount of content recreate. A content creator is just that it's someone who creates content. Now that can vary wildly. It can be someone who makes one video a month for the brand. It can be someone who, you know, has a greater commitment than that, but it just means just that you create content at some level for them. So, you know, uh, there's a full spectrum there to completely dedicated one-on-one -on -one relationship to maybe I'll make a video for you this month. So, you know, that's kind of what, uh, what those definitions mean. Um, at this point, I wanted to uh, clear up some misconceptions that have been put out there and uh, kind of kill some of the rumor mill. So we've kind of gotten through the point of what led up to it and what our ultimate decision was, um, how we handled our exit. That exit we have found uh, me declining to remove my public post uh, made a big difference in how they treated me. Um, I, in that conversation, it was not my actual post, but it was actually the comment thread that they were upset by. And I felt like my post was um, honest and it was not derogatory. Um, it was not slanderous. It was just um, a statement from me about me. Um, and um, so I didn't feel comfortable taking it down and putting up something that was sunshine and rainbows. Uh, when what had happened was so upsetting and so devastating to us, and it was not at all what we wanted, and we tried to fix it a million times and couldn't. Um, so to present it, present that it didn't matter, that that didn't matter, was uh, the thought of that was was more than I could morally stomach. Um, if you want to say so, this was one event that had happened, but to say that this was the only thing would be false. So, um, you know, there was just a lot, a lot of, it could be the growing pains of the company, whatever it was, there was just, again, there are layers, um, you know, me personally, yeah. you know, and that's not stuff I can, I can't, in, you know, tell you guys because it's contractual and that would be me violating a contract, but you know, there's things that personally I had gone through prior to this, um, you know, just schedules and releases and just things like that, that it just, it, it was, you know, this was building up is I guess the best. It was a build up. Right? Yes, yes, yes. It was a build up for me too. This was the, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. We're only talking about a two week period in this, in this conversation here, but this was something that had been going on for months. It had become a culture issue at this point. And so, you know, I, pushed through it multiple times. And this was that point when I could no longer push through it. Um, but I completely agree with you. That is super important to say that this was a buildup. Yes. And it just um, it became, you know, you have to choose as uh, personally, you know, with all the things that you've gone through. And again, there are things that I went through in the last year that Brandy didn't go through and things that she had experienced that I didn't experience. So when we say that everyone had a different experience, we truly mean that, you know, there may be people that don't haven't had any problems and that's yeah. great. And, and uh, this was a very, this had to be a very individual decision because the losses taken by everybody were different because we were on a commission-based program. Everybody's business looked different. So even though we had the same title, 
uh, the way that this affected everybody, it affected everyone differently. Nobody could make this decision except for each individual for themselves. And so I don't ever want to, uh, you know, I have no problem with decisions that anybody else made. I could only make the decision for my business. Um, a couple of misconceptions that I want to dissipate completely. Number one, there was no verbiage in our agreement that indicates any continuance of terms beyond termination. So um, any agreements that we had with this company while we were in contract with them do not continue now that we are outside of them. Um, I own any product. It was a term of, of my compensation. It is mine to keep. Um, there's no disagreement about that fact. And there is no terms in there that state what I can and can't do with it after I terminate. And so that is a rumor that I want to kill. That term does not exist. Um, another one is that we were not in contract negotiations at the time. There were nego no negotiations. The contracts already existed. We were trying to abide by terms of existing agreements. We were not negotiating anything new at this point. Um, so Our to say that any negotiations had been like the month prior, like the yearly contact contract negotiations. And, been... and even then, even then we did not ever come to any terms on that. It was, it was said we would readdress it at a later date. We were not actively in any sort of contract negotiations. This was not part of a negotiation. The contracts that we had were unquestionably in place. And that was what we were trying to abide by. Uh, you know, both the agreement for the transfer release and our compensation terms as brand ambassadors. So uh, to say that there was negotiations that we couldn't come to terms on, there was no, no negotiations. We already had terms. Um, the transfer release, I can't stress enough what the value of that transfer release to, to us was. There was months of work included. Uh, they included our ideas and our names. Um, mine were removed from the market. Cristana's are still available and they're absent of any compensation to her. Um, I speculate mine were removed because I did not agree to uh, remove that post. And uh, that is the consequence of that. Um, however, there is no compensation anyway. So I don't know if it's really a consequence. Yeah, I have, I honestly, I have no idea why mine are still up there. Cause I, I'm zero they do not benefit the artists in any way whatsoever, no way, shape or form. Um, and that's sad because they, you know, I said this before in this conversation, but they really were something that we were excited about and dedicated to. I can't even tell you the amount of time that I poured in to making that something special for the entire team. Uh, you know, it was, we were all, all of us all in on that transfer release. Um, and so to have it be completely devalued was devastating. I put together um, a video with everybody. Yeah. The, one of the ads. Yeah. Yeah. There was some really cute stuff. You guys Chasing around 12 on. people is not easy. Yeah. It's like hurting, <laughs> it's like hurting cats. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, one of the uh, comments that was put out publicly was that shipping and technology issues were to blame for our exit. And I kind of wanted to address that. Uh, shipping issues were something I think people knew right away. Doesn't make any sense because I'm a brand ambassador. Shipping issues have nothing to do with what I do. Shipping issues were something that the brand experienced and they wanted us to take the consequences of it. So yes, there were shipping delays. In exchange for that, they wanted to uh, erase the commitment to the brand ambassadors, our agreement on how the release was supposed to happen and rush those to market. Um, and that was the shipping issues. Did we have issue with that? You better believe we did because we had an agreement with them and that was a violation of it. So expecting us to absorb the consequence of those shipping issues was not the proper solution to that. So that is why that was given as an answer. Um, technology issues were given and that is uh, as far as the broken links. Yes, the links were broken. Yes, we acknowledge that, but there was no issue to find a resolution, uh, a workaround in their absence. So. That is why those two were given, but I think uh, both of those um, don't even begin to scratch the surface. No. Um, 
And so that kind of concludes everything, you know, the timeline, and that gets us to where we are, you know, current day, which, you know, I'll go back again, where Kristana and I had made a decision to not tell this story and keep it quiet, but it has allowed these little statements to be given, like the shipping and technology issues or being in contract negotiations or anything. And these are all things that are untrue. Um, and they have haunted us by not saying something. And so I hope that this kind of clears up so that people can understand what our actions were, the actions that we took, what the path looked like over these few days. And, you know, I'll say point blank, this has been a really hard experience for me. It was something that I was backed into a corner and had to do. Um, it was not a decision I took lightly. I had a huge commitment and I didn't see this coming a million miles away. It blindsided me. Uh, uh, you know, a couple other rumors, me and Kristana do not have a paint line coming out. <laughs> no, no um, we do not. We did not leave to enter into a new relationship for more money. Uh, that because we left without any plan whatsoever. It was, um, it was a decision that we had to make because the trust was completely gone. And there's no continuing in a relationship when you don't have trust anymore. Um, so, so you know, what this looked like for us is that we left and when we left years of content, you know, when you, when you work on affiliate marketing and things like that, you, you know, you may have done a post five years ago and it still kind of trickles in and makes you income. Right. Um, when we walked away and, and I will say this, and this is our fault that we put all of our eggs in one basket. Absolutely hands down. Um, putting your eggs all in one basket is not smart. And we're, we know that now <laughs> there's nothing we can do about it, but yeah, people say away. it all the time, but you think, you think, Oh, it's not me. It's not me. It's some, that's yeah, someone right else. It's not Fine. me. It is you. It's yeah. you. So when we walked away, you know, we walked away and all income stopped. And when your income comes from one place, you no longer make money. And so there are people out there that are like, they're going to go with whoever pays them the most. Okay. First of all, that's not true. I will never do that. I don't care if you pay me a million dollars, if I don't like, a well, part, I'm well, here's the deal. If we were going to go with whoever paid most, we would have just stayed in our old relationship, but yeah. no amount of money could fix what was broken at that point. Right. So if this was truly about money. Well, and also at the end of the day, like with it being such a public breakup and with people being on different sides and people not knowing and then you know with us being silent but then the narrative changes and we're we become like the bad guys um it's like it's not okay for it's not okay for us to like go other business routes and make money um but i'm a business and i have a family and i have children i have to take care of and i have to put food on the table and yeah. so anybody who it people leave jobs every day yeah and, and this this was a this was a step day. back we knew that this was going to be a step back in our business you know this took my business back several years and that was you know something that i was willing to take on because i couldn't do it anymore i had the wholehearted support of my husband and my family uh who walked me through this entire process it walked alongside me during this entire process and supported my decision uh, and that was a luxury, a huge luxury to be able to say, all right, it's time we've got to walk away and know that I have the support to do that. Yeah. And mine too. Uh, so, you know, it, the same, what Brandy said, I, I realized that not, and that's the thing is not everybody has the luxury to do that. And that is why everyone on the team's journey looks different. Um, I, I did have the luxury of having the support of my husband and us saying, Hey, you know, we've got to you've got to do something. Um, you know, I will say that I am much happier, um, mm -hmm. mentally. The consequence to my family was, it was taking a toll when we were dealing with situations, like we said, this was kind of a buildup, but dealing with situations month after month after month, you know, when this was all happening, I got in the car and I picked up one of my sons one day and he said, mom, are you having a, a bad day with you know, your company again. And, and I said, oh my gosh, like my kids are recognizing that I'm dealing with this enough that it's a repetitive thing and it's recognizable to them. Like 
the toll that it was taking uh, was great. Well, and you know, the thing is, is we've talked about this guys before that Brandy and I have been friends for a long time and we've been really close. And I will say that I was in the headspace and I know for sure Brandy was in a headspace the last year that was not good. Um, you know, I was much more negative than I normally am. So was Brandy. I think we probably, you know, when you have it, it's negative, you know, like whether it's, I'm not dealing with something right. So I go to Brandy and like, it was just, it, it became too much. And so, you know, I knew that I needed to walk away at, you know, it, like we said, it was a buildup and I knew if I didn't walk away for me, it wasn't going to get better. I don't know if it gets better. I don't know if it was fixed. I don't know, but all I know, well, that's, an, that, that, that's something I want to say too. Part of my thought process was Maybe I can make a statement here and maybe I couldn't make change being there, but maybe by walking away, I can impact some change and it will make it better for other people. That was absolutely part of where my heart was. Um, you know, I was the team lead. I took a lot of pride in this team, in growing the program, in creating the, you know, the structure, in building this team of women that worked alongside each other. I absorbed a lot of punches uh, that never made it through. Uh, that took a toll on me um, because a I lot can of say times personally too, I saw it because the thing is, is even though Brandy was the team lead, her and I are best friends and there's things that we talked about. You know, I may have been the shoulder for her when she couldn't as a team lead. We knew the boundaries. Like I knew, okay, we're friends here. Here's our business. And um, you know, there was things that I saw her go through <laughs> I would not, I'm telling you right now, I would have been like, bye. Yeah. Oh, bye, bye. <laughs> I gotta go. I was like, I don't know how you, I'm much more, I'm a thug. I'm a, okay? I'm a fixer. <laughs> I'm a fixer. And I've always had the tendency to, I will absorb your problem because I want to fix it. I want everybody to leave feeling like they won and we got a solution and, you know, and when I couldn't fix anything, it really, really, really took a toll. It you know, it was constantly going to the table and it was never, um, so, you know, there, there was a, there was a huge burden there. And to say that as much as it sucks and I hate, I hated having to go through this. I will say that having Brandy to talk to every day, who was there for every single second of this that I didn't have to explain, you know, cause you know, there are a few people that we were able to talk to behind the scenes, but for the most part, you know, we didn't go public. We didn't go in front of thousands of people and say something. And, you know, we're not asking people to watch the company and see what we're doing, things like that. Um, you know, we really do just want to move on. I want the best for the people that are still there. And again, I just want to move on and I just want it to stop. I want the messages, the, the, there's me like the, the crazy the messages comments, about the, the comments, the, the message, the, specu the speculation, the blaming. Like, I think the hardest part for me was like, I, I went through something extremely traumatic. I took huge losses and I'm getting blamed for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like it's now, it, it's now our fault that like maybe people aren't doing so well. Like I just, yeah, uh, that was really, really hard for me. Cause I wanted to be like, you gotta be kidding me right yeah. now. So, um, you know, it's, I, I, I said this last week and I'll say this again. I appreciate everything that I learned. I appreciate yeah. the positive that I took and I appreciate the negative because what that has done is it has helped me. And I don't want you, I don't want people to listen. I need to advocate for an artist. I am an artist. I'm a small business owner. And if, we, if I don't advocate and be truthful and, and stand my ground of what I will do, then how can I, as a community, have people in my community, how can I tell them to do something? How can I tell yeah, them, and, and, you know, you shouldn't and do this. And, and I, well, it's not to like okay. talk bad about companies because obviously without companies, we wouldn't have, you know, but I always want to advocate for artists because we work alongside these companies and that's how it needs to be. It needs to be a company working with a company 
And when those a, lines get blurred, a collaboration and a yes. partnership and mutually beneficial, when it's like that, it is so amazing. Um, uh, you know, one point I want to go back to is, you know, we have the advantage, had the advantage through this whole thing of being established artists and maybe having a little bit more of a voice than some other people did or felt comfortable. And so I felt like this is a privilege that I've, you know, that we've gotten established enough to be able to speak up and say things that people might be scared of, or, you, you know, you don't really know what your place is. And so, you know, that was always something that I tried to, uh, you know, used to its best is, is that we had the privilege of having a voice because we were established, we had tenure, we had longevity, we had experience, um, and speak up for people who maybe don't have that same voice. Um, well, it's funny because my husband, you know, he's military and he said, he's always said that if he doesn't make his um, superiors mad, then he's not doing his job for his peers. So if he is, if he's not speaking up for himself and for, you know, his peers and the people that maybe can't speak up, whether, you know, once he got more rank, you know, once he got more rank, he was like, if I don't, if I'm not making one of them mad, someone that's a superior, then I'm not doing my job because then I'm not, you know, being open and honest. And, you know, I may be saying things that they don't like, but I'm not here for them. I'm here for my peers. I'm here for, you know, to protect these people underneath and be that lifeline, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and I, and I, I agree, like there was a million times when I would say that this relationship was a positive relationship for me. And that's why I stayed in it for so long. And I never, never, never will discount the experience that I got from it. Uh, you know, we talked a minute ago about brands and artists being a positive collaboration. And I had that experience and I saw how amazing and, you know, life changing and industry changing it can be when a brand and an artist come together and you make magic happen together. It is amazing. And so I totally believe in that relationship, but it's when uh, it has to be a collaboration, be, you know, that, that your two businesses that are coming together and working together. And I felt like we had lost that collaboration and we almost became subordinate to. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the things that I miss um, about that relationship. And that's those collaborations again, because I mean, I had an amazing experience for years. That's why I stayed for so long. Things changed. Um, and I, I want to now find that part that I valued again. Yeah. And that's, I mean, honestly, when you, you know, I'm sitting here listening to you, but there's people who get married and then years down the road, it just, they grow apart for whatever reason on both ends. And, you know, they, people always say there's, there's a saying, it says there's three sides or there's two sides to every story. That's not the saying I like. There's a saying it's called, there's three sides to every story, yours, theirs, and the truth. And so as humans, we may, is there things that I could have done better or maybe could have stepped back? Maybe could I have sat back and waited another week to see what would have happened? I could have, but I'm not quite sure that that would have done anything. And then it would have just kept going. And so could have, would have, should have, I just don't know that that in my heart, it's not, it's, there was already too much that had happened before this for me anyways, to address that point, there was too much that had happened before this, it had become a trend. And yeah. so for me to deny it again and again, and it, like, there just has to be a point when I say, okay, I see the writing on the wall here. Uh, and I'm going to recognize that this is a trend and, it, and, and that there is, has a, there's a change that's been made. And you need to understand too that Brandy and I are completely different. So Brandy is the kind of person that want, is a fixer, right? And she's going to continue to want to talk about this problem and work it through and, and probably beat a dead horse. I am an all or nothing person. That's why I said I'm a thug. <laughs> I, when I'm done, I follow my gut instinct and my husband jokes about this, but when I know in my heart and my gut, when I want to do something and I make a lot of decisions based on that and it hasn't steered me wrong so far. Um, not to say that it never will, but I am very much all or nothing. And in my head, when it clicks and I say, I am done, that means I am done. I am. Well, and, but, but I don't, done. I don't want you to shrug off that there wasn't a lot of thought in this. Like we had time that this was building up for and yeah. the amount of communication and the, the, the curtness of the communication and, um, just how blunt it was 
was kind of undeniable. So it, it even killed any hope that you could have that maybe this will get better if I just yeah. stay on the ride for longer. So, uh, you know, the emotions that we went through in that time were real, they were valid. Uh, you know, how we were talked to, all those things left impressions. And, you know, that, you and that can't, goes to the you, toxic positivity. Um, you know, toxic positivity is directly when you may, are made to feel like you are like crazy, like, like you're the problem. You know, you've got a team of, let's say 20 people and only two of you are so upset that you voice your opinion, you know, and, and then you are kind of like, wait a minute, maybe I'm the problem. Nobody else is saying anything. Like maybe it's me, but you know, you get to a point where you have to make a decision and, um, you know, being quiet or just sitting back and, and saying, okay, maybe, you know, allowing, allowing another party to make you feel like your feelings are not valid. That's when there's a problem. And, you know, I just, I was in the military. Okay. (laughs) I don't have time for that. (laughs) I don't have time for that kind of stuff. So here's my question to you, Brandy, as we wrap up, what are you hoping for, you know, cause I know someone's going to say, well, why are they bringing it up now? I will say that we have talked in depth and we have wished that we would have came out earlier, but we truly thought that it would be okay that it, it, it is okay. I'm not saying that, you know, we're crying every single day, but you know, it's, it's a new thing, you know, again, like I said, yeah. beats, screenshots, and we're just like, what is that? Ha- what people, world am people I in keep, right keep speculating. And so they won't, won't just let it rest. You know, yeah. we, I have, I don't, I don't have any ill will towards anybody. I don't, I'm not trying to bring anybody down. I'm not masterminding a plan. I really just want to part ways and separate, but that has not been allowed to happen. So I'm hoping, what do I hope to, to come from this? I'm hoping that the story will be resolved in people's head. You'll feel like you have an understanding of it. Uh, maybe that you have perspective from both sides that allows you to make an independent decision. Um, I don't expect anybody to choose sides. I don't expect anybody to defend me. I don't need sympathy or anything. I just want people to be supportive of me moving on and doing so freely and unencumbered by this. Yeah. And, and also, you know, with a, with our character, you know, when you, it's really hard when your character comes in question, it's when you give and give and give, and you're the same person for years and years and years, and then there's a big situation that happens and people automatically think that you've turned into some evil, weird monster. It's, it's weird. It's a weird feeling that like people look at you differently because of, I always make assumptions on how Uh, my personal experience with somebody. So you could tell me all day long that someone's this way, but I'm going to make my assumptions when I personally deal with that person. And that's all we're asking is to just, we're not any different. We're just just moved on a little bit, you know? Yeah. For people that have worked alongside me and they've seen my work ethic and my dedication and my personality and my, you know, everything. And all of a sudden to think like I have devil horns well that's not how this happened then you're missing a piece of the story and so I wanted to give people that piece of the story I want to take my devil horns off and I'm going to put them back in the drawer for later um (laughs) so I I agree I do not want my character assaulted for making a decision that I did not want to have to make in the first place so I think when you leave a company too and especially one at that caliber when you've become a face to it, it there and then no longer you know, things are not going, I guess, as smooth. That's, I don't know if that's just ignorant to say, like, I don't want to be like, oh, we are these great big artists, right? And we help the company grow. But when you no longer have that element, if that is negatively affecting other companies, there's someone that has to be the scapegoat. And it's got to be somebody's fault. It's just human nature to blame somebody somewhere. And so why not? You're not going to look at the person you're still working with. You're going to look at the removed party, because it's not going to hurt their feelings. Well, it gets back to us, you know, and it, it does hurt. I'm a human. I'm a human being. Yeah. 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 I, it does. And, uh, you know, reading those words and, and people having those thoughts about you, it does hurt, you know, uh, even, even things like, uh, 
you know, whether I support small businesses, I am a small business. I'm the very smallest a business can possibly be. I am a one person business. I had a, a virtual assistant. I no longer do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, do I support small business? Heck yeah. Did my small business take the hugest losses of anybody in this entire situation? Heck yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, for it to be put squarely on my plate, my losses are greater than anybody's at this point. Yeah. Thank God we have sugar daddies. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wait, what? Is there an app for that? <laughs> I think so. I heard there is. <laughs> huh, I just got connected with this Greg named Chris Cusson. I, yeah. I'm Ooh, yeah. Right on He'll that pay one. all your yeah. bills. That's fine. Don't even worry oh, yeah. about it. <laughs> I hear he has, med he has medical benefits, medical. He does. And I also heard that, uh, yeah. <laughs> also heard that he has retirement. Uh, yeah, retirement, you. medical benefits, all the things. Good. Good. <laughs> Only a few sacrifices to make. But <laughs> you know, I want to say that I'm thankful for the outpouring of support has been great too. I don't want the negative to overshadow the positive. The positive has been amazing. Just the comments, like you guys are feeding my soul through a really hard thing. And I'm super grateful for all the positive support, the people that have followed us along on our journey moving forward and know that it's the best thing and don't care because they watch for us and not what brand we use. And that stuff has been like the biggest testament to me. So I don't want any of this to overshadow that. Please know that, I mean, the positivity is all that got me through this. And I'm super grateful for every message, every what? comment, Excuse every- me? The positivity is the only thing that got you through this? Uh, I mean, my chopped liver. Yeah, kind of. I mean, and I do want to thank you. Too. You're not just talking about people, but you know, the brands that have, there are brands that we used prior and a lot of, you know, I don't want to say a lot of them. Um, you know, they have welcomed us back with open arms and that yeah. has been such a game changer. A, a and huge I, and testament I always make sure to I that. Say, you know, thank you for that because you know, you, it's you, left a huge impression on me to see how many open arms there were out there. That was really, 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 I don't know, gratifying. And I'm looking for all these, you know, things everywhere, you know, you, and I also want to mention Emily too. Emily went through this yeah. alongside us. Um, she, you know, suffered a similar experience to us. And so Emily from Weatherhearts Designs is, has, you know, very much been a support too. And, and, um, you know, I want to appreciate her and Kristana and my husband and, but I mean, my followers and your followers too, I'm sure have just been amazing. So please yeah. keep it coming. Please keep yeah. feeding my soul. Keep the negativity away. You know, that gift yeah. where someone's like kicking and stuff. Like yeah. if you're negative, just go, you just go. If you don't have anything nice to say, just move on, please. Yeah. Just don't say anything at all. Yeah, Honestly, that is always the best choice is to just not say anything just if you're not sure you don't you have to attend heard... every argument or yeah. Into, you know yeah I think that's the biggest thing just I would love to see you know if someone puts out a comment thread and you think you want to get on on the action let it die yeah let it die and we will let it die too yeah um so you know again this is just because we felt like we couldn't move forward without tiptoeing around stuff and we just don't want it to be awkward and I know it, it sounds really weird to say we owe you guys an explanation, but I do kind of think that we do because, yeah. you know, if you're following someone and you guys have had our back and not questioned it, I think you deserve to know what our side is. And yeah. that way, you know, that you're supporting someone who, you know, cause you may be hearing stuff over here and you're like, well, I really like her, but maybe she is crazy. And maybe she does have devil horns and like, you know, it's just a business decision. People make business decisions all the time, every day. And for some reason, this one just got real. Yeah. Blew, it blew up, blew up a little bit. A little yeah. Bit. Yeah. I mean, um, um, and everything will be fun from now on. Okay. Promise. We're not going to talk about well, it again. This is done. But but I also think this has a lot of value in our experience as businesses. This is something that we went through. It's always going to be a part of our story. Now it will always be a part of our decisions and how we make our decisions and what path we take. And, you know, we will be all the wiser for having gone through this. And so maybe this helps explain to you when we're, you know, in future episodes, when we're talking about other topics, 
why our reasoning is what it is. And this is always going to be, a, you know, a part of that. So if we were, if we left this huge gaping wormhole in, in, what, you know, how we think and what our reasoning is, people would never understand. So, yeah. you know, now I think you, you'll know that we're going to always take this into account. Right. And we just wanted it to be straightforward to the point. You know, again, there's layers, there's other things, you know, maybe on calls, there's situation, things that were said, ways that people were treated. Um, but none of that matters right now. You know, we just, as long as you know, exactly like, you know, the ends and out, the black and white of it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. We can move on. We can be who we are. I am still good friends with some of the women that are still with the company. I support them 110%. I will never yeah. not support them. If they want to stay, they stay. If they want to leave, I'll be here to hold their hand when they leave. Yep. And, you know, um, so I'm not, I'm not angry, you know, no. I wouldn't you say, know, I, I didn't, you know, it's a breakup. Honestly, I'm super grateful for the people who have uh, kept that bridge intact as we go through this, because it's really hard, you know, it took people and it forced us to, you know, split apart. And so I'm super grateful for, uh, you know, the effort that I've seen to keep those bridges intact. It does mean a lot to me, you know, a year down the road, this isn't going to matter. So, um, so I, yeah, you know, I mean, I, it, does, and it did show you like it, it shows where you stand. Cause you know, in this business, it's kind of strange because you, be, you become friends with people and you grow these friendships, but they're sometimes they're far apart, right? You're not like just Brandy and I talk to each other every single day. And we've told you guys before, we've gone through good, bad, ugly, you know, she's been mad at me. I've been mad at her, whatever, you know, it's, we're very, yeah. Yeah. You've done a lot of bad things to me. Me? Stole what? my candy, stole my candy, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you, have, you have candy. <laughs> not everybody. Ha we understand how lucky we are to have each other because yeah. not everybody can find that. And so when you go through this, you know, we really, we found out the character of a lot of people and it was heartbreaking yeah. there was some people who we did not expect and it broke our heart and there are people we didn't expect to have our back 110 percent, and that also meant a lot so you know it's just in a in it also let's talk about this industry is very women driven and sometimes that cannot be the best thing i am all about women power but sometimes i'm like oh man <laughs> well we're, we're a little crazy we're a little yeah. crazy it's so it, true it's it's very female dominated and you know it gets highly competitive at times and I was always really proud that we managed to have a team that didn't eat each other alive and could work alongside each other and advocate for each other. And, you know, that's a really hard thing to accomplish. So even still, you know, I hope that uh, relationships can be mended and, you know, around the corner, things don't look so big anymore and, and none of this matters in the long run. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and do you guys have any questions? As long as yeah. it's yeah, so I hope you guys feel like the elephant has left the room. He has exited stage left. The yeah. elephant has left he's the gone. building. He's gone now. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> gone. There's no more elephant, but we're not going to elaborate on anything. We're not going to bash. We're not going to, you know, this was a very factual timeline. You know, a lot of it, there was some interpretation, but a lot of it cannot be disputed. This is exactly how the situation went down. These are the things that happened. Um, and uh so you know i i don't we won't elaborate in the comments we won't you know answer specific questions beyond anything that we've said in here but you know we we would love to hear from you guys and i hope you, you feel kind of resolved and we feel resolved after this yeah and i you know i just want to say that from this point forward like brandy said you know we're not going to elaborate on stuff please don't message us and ask us a bunch of questions because it's exhausting like this has been exhausting and i have no i don't want to talk about it anymore yeah. i just want to move on i think that it's important for us to have told our side of the story because we never did we haven't it's been months it's what the beginning of december it's now almost the beginning of february it's been two months and we've sat back and sat back and I am a very strong willed person and I do not let people mess with me. And I hit my point where I was like, enough is enough. I am a grown yeah. woman. I'm an adult. I own a business. This is not okay. I know this is not okay. Um, and so if this means that people attack us more, I, I mean, I don't know how it could, <laughs> but you know, someone had said, you know, you, this may open you up to more criticism. 
I don't care anymore. I don't care. Anymore. Yeah, I That's mean, if it, if it does, we, we may choose to address things in the future. I can't predict a future. I won't try. I didn't predict that this would be the future. So all I can say is we'll have to just address things one thing at a time as they come. Uh, I don't have all the answers at this point. I'm just trying to handle things the best way that I can one step at a time. Yeah, and the only thing I can ask is just remember we're humans. Yeah. I'm just a person with two small children living in Germany with my active duty husband. I'm not some crazy celebrity. I don't have a PR department. I don't have lawyers sign. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, oh, well, sorry. You know, a lot, I'm just a hot mess. <laughs> a lot of things, a lot of things just get solved with communication. And when communication is broken, then there, you know, there's no, there's no going past that. So, yeah. um, you know, we didn't have that option. I don't expect to have it now. So it doesn't really matter anymore. Look, we moved past Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. Can we move past this? I'm still really upset about that. Can we do an episode on that, by the I way? I didn't know what happened. See? Yeah. I'm like other people. People are like, wow, well, we need to know what happened with Brandy and Kristana. See? I don't care if it was 20 years ago. I want to I want to hear it. Like, I want them to sit down with Brad and Jen. Or can they just reunite? Yeah. We need to know I, what the elephant in the room was for them. Yeah. We got, ben, we, got be we got Benefer back. Ben, ben Affleck and Jennifer... J-Lo? J-Lo, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's her name again? Jenny from the block. Jenny from, what? <laughs> okay, Ben Affleck's okay looking, but like, how does he keep getting like Jennifer Lopez and who is this other Jennifer one? Jennifer Garner. I was yeah, just watching 13 no. Going on 30 the other day, which by the way is the best movie ever. And I have this dream that one day I'll appear at an event and everybody's going to know the thriller dance at the same time. That is my lifelong dream. Yeah, it'll happen. Make it happen. Just keep on dreaming, girl. Keep on yeah. dreaming. We've been watching yeah. The Office. We never watched it before. So now we're like going through the whole episode of The Office. And I'm like, can Jim and Pam just get together already? Don't say yeah. we're only We're only in season like three. And I'm like, can they just stop messing around? Spoiler alert. No, I, but but there again, again, if they would just talk to each other, like I yeah. can't watch shows where people repetitively just, you just don't talk. Like just talk. I know yeah. this could be solved. Oh yeah. It was the one, um, the episode that we just watched where Pam told her ex fiance that they were kissing or that they kissed and they're at the, the restaurant. And he was like, you called off our wedding for this guy. She's like, well, that, and among other things, he's like, and you're not even going to try to date him. I don't get you, Pam. Even like, he, yeah, you I don't get about you, Pam. It. Yeah, like, yeah, I love you. I love you too. Oh my gosh, problem solved. And we just, but then they would have had to skip that. We would have just lost like 10 seasons right there. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. It's ridiculous, but whatever. they got to drag it out. Anyways, guys, I know this is probably a little bit not as lighthearted, but a promise moving on. Let us know what it's you guys good. want to hear about. Like, you know, we are open to suggestions. And if you guys want us to talk about certain things, let us. I know. got some great suggestions last week and it, or okay. yeah, last week. And it was, uh, people wanted, had questions about how we price things. People wanted to hear about, um, doing, uh, rehabs on a budget. If you don't oh, have yeah. all these elaborate materials, what are some ways that you can, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are some options for that? Which I love that topic, you know, yeah. cost cutting measures, uh, uh, how, you know, how we, how we price things for sale out on the market. I would love to talk about different markets. Um, Oh gosh, I'm you know, sure there was more too. We could do like a roundup, like a, like you said, where we could talk about the, the products that we used and what we really like about them. So, or we could do that like once a month, like we could do like a monthly yeah. roundup. Like this is what I use. These are the colors I use. This is what I really liked. And this is why. And yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I want to talk about as we go through each week and we're using these different brands, what really stood out to me. So that's a little feature that I want to have. And that can be just a little blurb in each episode that we have on a bigger topic, but um, some really, really, really great ideas came in the comments from last week about what you guys have questions about. What do you want to yeah. hear about? So keep them yeah, coming. Let us know. Cause I mean, we've been there, done that. We've started our yeah. own 
business, you know, if there's a mistake to have been made, it has been made. Hey, you know what I learned? You remember how I wrote you and asked you about the tack cloths? And I asked you if you use tack yes. cloths. Do you want to yes. know why I said that? So I just shared it in my last YouTube video. Well, I just figured because you always just say random stuff to me. So <laughs> I am I am very much like, hey, did you know? And everyone's like, <laughs> you yes, yeah, ridiculous. So I was looking on the back of Crystal Lax polyurethane, their water-based polyurethane. And it said, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me, it said, don't use a tap cloth. And I was like, what? That's weird. So you I- You don't tell her. me if I can or can't use yeah. a tap cloth. Oh, I'll decide. Me. Yeah, you don't tell, you're not the boss of me. So I messaged her and I said, this is weird. I've never, I've never had a company tell me like with a top coat, like you can't use a tap cloth. And she's like, it's not that you can't use a tap cloth is that you want to avoid ones that have, um, silicone in them. And mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that tack cloths had silicone. So I looked at my tack cloth, it's silicone free, but, um, because if a tack cloth has silicone in it, it can cause adhesion issues. Kind yeah, of like, yeah. if you guys have ever you, stained, you can't paint silicone. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, you know, like the, the fish product. eye or whatever that you get. If someone's like used pledge on a table and you, you sand and, um, stain, or you strip the table down. If you don't use like denatured alcohol or like a, a thinner or something to get the silicone in it. Cause you never know when you pick up a yeah. piece, you don't know if someone's using that. So when you are staining, and these are things we could talk about too, when you're staining, you get that fish eye and that's because there's silicone embedded into the wood grain. So same concept. So if you're going to be using yeah. tack cloths and water waterborne, water-based sealers or anything, make sure you check and see if there's silicone in it. That's super interesting. I'm glad that yeah. you asked them. When you asked me that, I said, no, I don't use a tack cloth. I, I use a damn brown. They feel dirty and sticky. I tack like, cloths hey, are well. weird to me. They always feel dirty and sticky. Well, it's the silicone that's making them feel sticky. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I have them and I've tried them and they just don't they do they're dirty and sticky yeah so i just I use like a damn brag but see that's why we're different but, i like them she yeah them, so there's usually more than one way to skin a cat when you're doing yeah. this and there's no right or wrong way i've right. never skinned my cat by the way so don't that's let that rumor get out saying. there where does that even come from weird people that skin cats <laughs> so weird <laughs> So There's a guy out there doing that, I'm sure. Yeah. Somebody needs I to saw, stop him I saw Silence of the Lambs. There's weird <laughs> people out there. It puts the lotion in the butt. <laughs> does what it's told. <laughs> hey, can you talk about your background real quick? Uh, it's beautiful, right? Yeah, I'm just sitting out here. Can you put your arm up here for a second? What magic? If you guys didn't know, Brandy's going to take, she's going to stop doing furniture and she's going to give David Blaine a run for his money. Brandy Blaine. <laughs> with this, with my, with my detached arm over yeah, here. Illusionist. <laughs> I changed I my back. Staging. The staging of your dresser is your arm like coming out of the out of, It's co coming out of the drawer. Hello, buy me. So beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously my background is fake. I put in a fake background. It was either this or a Hawaiian Island, but I'm feeling the dresser tonight. Yeah. I like that dresser. That's really pretty. That's your uh, courtesy, piece, right? Courtesy of Annie Sloan. And there's a redesign with Prima stencil on there. I made hardware backs with redesign with Prima. Um, the knobs are from Hobby Lobby. So that was a really fun project. It just kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah, I kind of wish like you it. had your background because your latest piece was that tool chest one, which was super fun and creative. Here, let me, let me po pull up a picture. I'll show you guys. Yeah, if you guys haven't already seen it, go check out Cristana's page at Bella Renovare. And she did a piece that looks dead on like a snap-on tool chest. You can't even capture the details in there because no, the details are amazing. Yeah, I did like some faux, I don't know. You can probably see it on it. Yeah. Yeah, there's text, out. there's texture in there. It's grungy. It not, looks like it was wiped real. through too much. You never know what's on this camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just back to kidding. Pics. not weird. <laughs> all right, you guys, we uh, are super grateful for the chance to talk with you guys all this week. I hope you might actually come back again another week. And next week, we will start tackling, we'll start tackling some of these topics. I would like to do the one about, about uh, redesigning on a budget. Like what yeah, are different ways it. that you can, yeah. Yeah, I think right. that's a good idea. Let's do it. So we are going to take that one on next week. So you guys come back if you'd like to hear more about that. Uh, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brush by Brandy. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and my friend over here. I'm Cristana with Bella Renovare by Cristana. I've got all the same YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. 
I even have a Twitter. I always like to throw that out there. I even have a Twitter. I don't even know. I'm not even logged in. I don't know how to use that. You have the Twitter? Yeah, I I, I got a, I don't even know why, how, where, I don't know. I'll tell you what Twitter is good for. I like Twitter for uh, when it's breaking news and you want to hear like the most current thing. That's what Twitter is good for. Other than that, I don't really get it. Like they don't even let me put pictures of my dressers on there. They just want like words. Yeah. And like 24 words or something like that. Like I have a lot. Hey, Twitter. Yeah. Can I just show you a picture of the dresser instead of talking about it? We could save so much time, right? Trying to hold me back. (laughs) All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Bye.